Good morning, everyone. Pastor Song Bay here from Lighthouse Global. I hope you can find me. Uh, please let me know um, if you are watching uh, right now. I'm going to wait on and pray. Uh, join me for this last broadcast of uh, the War Room today. So I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. I thank you for the 10 days of prayer that we plow through and the Zoom calls that we've been having. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will just encourage our spirits with the now word of the Lord. And I thank you that you are a good God. I pray, Father, that your anointing and the power of the blood of Jesus will be over us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. Please share this on your wall. Share it with those who might be interested. I am really um, grateful for the word of the Lord that the that God has given me. Today's more like a wrapping up of uh, the 10 days. The 10, 10 days of prayer is done. It has been over since yesterday, but today is the last broadcast for uh, this topic, the war room. But we are hoping to continue the Zoom calls every night. Every night, uh, 6 p.m. PST, 9 p.m. EST, we have been doing intercession for um, in regards to Israel Hamas war. And you know, the God's really been pouring out his revelation. It has been just amazing. But welcome. It's great to see some of you uh, share this on your wall. Um, how many of you have been blessed? I'd love to hear from you. How many of you have been encouraged by the direction that God's given us through these broadcasts? I want you to tell me where you're joining us from and uh, share this on your wall and encourage other people to join right now. Um, today's the last um, broadcast with the war room but the war room will continue um and uh all the po all these videos will be posted on face uh, on youtube so you can go back to it and watch it again yes hi everybody it's great to see you grace to see you yes so um let me so today's title of this word is very simple it is this is a spiritual war so as we were doing the Zoom calls, it has been very uh, encouraging for me personally because the more we intercede prophetically, God will release um, insights into it. And today, my, my encouragement to you is as we pray, why should we pray? Why should we pray? Because there's a war raging. And uh, how relevant is that to our real life here, wherever you're living from, in whichever country you're at? It's because this is a spiritual war. It's not just a physical war, but it's a spiritual war. So the reason why the Israel-Hamas war is a very difficult one to pray for is because, number one, this is a uh, religious war, a holy war on both sides. So what we need to remember um, as we watch the news, and we cannot be caught up in the uh, rhetoric of things that people are saying, because what you see in the media, what you see and hear is really not um, how God sees it. And you know, um, for the for the radical Muslims, now I, I shared with you about how many years back, uh, uh, these prophets who prophesied billions will harvest, these prophets who prophesied the end times harvest and the miracles, they also prophesied and said, you must pray against um, radical Islam and communists to not come together. And it's a real thing. Like we're at a spiritual war and we're 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 at the beginning of the end times. We're not at the full on end times, but we're we're preparing the church for the second coming of Jesus. It's very close. Jesus is coming back soon. How many of you feel it as things escalate and as things accelerate? Jesus is coming back soon. And um in that sense we should not be shocked. And and another warning is that you know, just like the virgin, the story, the parable of the virgins where the five virgins were wise, the wise virgins had their oil in their lamp and uh, they did not leave their post. <laughs> the other five were foolish virgins who realized they didn't have enough oil and they said, I'm going to go and get my oil and they missed the timing of things. So really as the end times come, it's really about the timing and about the preparedness and about the readiness of who we are as, as a body of Christ, who I am as a Christian. Um, so I want to encourage you just to be ready for these things. But I want us to see it from this perspective. As I was praying, of course, for the things that we see in the physical, um, the reason why these radical uh, Islam, they're doing what they're doing is because to them, it's a it's a religious war. It, to them, it's a holy war. They're actually more ready to die for their Allah 
then we are ready to die for Jesus. Now think about that. Think about that. Think about that. And I go back to some of the dreams I had in the past where God said um, to raise up martyrs. And this theme of raising up martyrs has been, this theme of raising up martyrs has been in my life since I was in my 20s. And uh, before, when I didn't quite have revelation about it, I was very scared of even like the concept of it. But I, I still remember I prayed for, <laughs> it's funny when I was at Yale, uh, Yale, Yale, I was ministering to Yale college students. I remember for one young man, he's not a young man anymore, but one young man I prayed for. And it was a real uh, radical word about how God has called him to be a martyr for Christ and that he's going to die for Jesus. It was a radical word. And I remember he was shocked. And I, I don't think he was crying, but he was shocked. And later he came to me like Nicodemus going to Jesus and said, um, how did you know? Because God had told me that I would be a martyr for Christ. And this is a brilliant Yale stu college student. And many times the Lord will give me words about raising a martyrs and it would just, it's a difficult word. It's not an easy word, you know, but um, I want you to see like what is going on in the world right now with Israel Hamas war for the Hamas, for the radical Islam, they were brainwashed and taught since the early age that they are to, um, they are to die for, for their God and that, that they're doing, they're, they're, Acts of violence is justified in their own eyes, right? And it's 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 on both sides. It's a holy war for them. So that's something that we have to keep in mind and intercede. That is why this is a difficult season that we're living in. Number two, this should be prayed from a spiritual warfare perspective. And uh, we've been doing daily Zoom calls. And even last night, there was so much spirit, spirit of revelation. And uh, I intend to do this other word that I wasn't able to release on my social media, YouTube or Facebook. I just got really busy. But now looking back, this was for the year 5784 and uh, for the Hebrew New Year. And uh, the prophetic word that God had given me um, that I released in our conference was, this is the year of the Trojan horse. And let me tell you, I never, I am not interested in Greek mythology. I'm not into it. Um, I don't really know a whole lot, but God said, uh, this is the year of the Trojan horse. And um, I was driving to the venue where we were having 5784 Prophecy Revival. And as I was driving, I drove through a, a roadway that said Trojan Way. And I thought, this is hilarious. God is really speaking about the Trojan War. And I, I don't really quite remember. All, all I remember is the, the movie that I saw on Trojan War. Anyhow. Um, I will do a word on it because there's a lot packed in there when God says it's the year of the Trojan horse and he said it's an ear of the open door. But I'm not just talking about blessings opening and you know, all the good stuff opening. But what I what I preached that day for the 5784 was that the Trojan horse is like a strategy of God, like God packs his people inside a strategy of God and the door of strategies open inside the enemy's camp. So get ready to go inside the enemy's camp. That's what it was. That's what the prophetic word was that God is opening up a door to attack the enemy from the inside. And many of you are have a calling to be a Trojan horse. Many of you are already positioned in a place of the enemy's camp. It's it's also in line with the story of Esther, right? Esther was the Trojan horse of God that she was sent inside the palace for such a time as this. She didn't know it, but when, when it was time, she had to reveal that she was a Jew and, um, and all of those things. So some of you are being used by the Lord like that. And then another prophetic word, this is from the past two months of broadcast that I've been doing. And sometimes when a prophet releases a word, I've, I've seen this many times, when I release a prophetic word at a certain time, a lot of times I don't know why I'm saying those things, but there's afterwards, I always look back and say, oh, that is why God gave me that word. Well, here's another thing. I remember, I can't even remember exactly when, but the Lord had given me, this was in Florida uh, during the summer or in August. I had a word about how God's raising up Wonder Woman of this generation and how um, the enemy had planned to release the spirit of Eris. And, uh, you know, there was, gonna, there was going to be, and maybe there still is, a plan to... Uh, 
do another drama of COVID around the world, <laughs> release the virus of COVID. Uh, and then the, the, uh, they were going to name it Eris. Did you know that they were going to name COVID virus Eris? And so the goddess of Eris is a goddess who calls forth war and discord. So we've specifically prayed against the spirit of Eris, the goddess who calls forth war and discord. According to Iliad, she wanders about at first, at first small and insignificant, but she soon raises her head up to heaven. She's the sister of Eris. I don't know how that, that pronunciation is different, different spelling. And, and with him, she delights in the tumult of war, increasing the moaning of men. So it's a, it's a spirit of war, call forth war and discord. And I was prophesying that God is dealing with the discord that's coming out of women or using the feminine qualities or, or Jezebelic kind of things to sow discord among people it's of the flesh. God warned us about this about two and a half, three months ago already. And I was prophesying that the Lord is raising up a movement of women who are like wonder working women who will eradicate Eris and get ready to get get rid of this spirit of discord and look at what's happening right now all around the world. Um, the Lord is releasing Prince of Peace. And I don't I know that many of you who watch my videos, you don't fully understand everything that I do. But when I was up in Times Square at min midnight, the theme that I went into uh, that God has spoken to me was sing about the Prince of Peace. And so I sang a song, uh, just a simple song, worship. But the Lord said, Prince of Peace is coming. Peace is coming. Peace is coming. Declare shalom and peace over the city in the middle of the night. Because during the day, there's probably a lot of protests that I didn't know about. I just saw yesterday's news that on the same weekend that we were in Times Square for the Midnight Revival, on Friday, there was a huge, uh, massive, um, almost like a lockdown shutdown in um, Grand Central that I didn't know about. There was a pro-Palestinian um, protest and it was a mess, but you know, I didn't even know that I was right there. Didn't even know it because I probably was super focused on our revival, but um, you know, the Lord said declare peace over the city. And so I declare over you, Prince of Peace is coming. The God of discord is being dealt with. The Lord is breaking and, and removing the spirit of discord who call forth war in Jesus name. Amen and amen. And then another thing that I want to share today is more like a wrapping up of the past 10 days and the revelations that God's given me. I'm having so much fun. But and then this isn't a conclusive word. It's a very brief kind of um, just giving you little points of what God's given me so we can pray into it. The third point was dig deeper into the land of Israel and Gaza. And, um, you know, when I say this is a spiritual war, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. When I say spiritual war, demons are real and territorial spirits reside in a place where these spirits are welcome. What I mean by that is Holy Spirit comes. Holy Spirit loves to come to a place where the Holy Ghost is welcome. That is why we have to welcome the Lord. That is why Jesus said, dust off, dust off the dust off your feet if they don't welcome you. See, as a revivalist, as a woman who carry the spirit of God and spirit of prophecy, if you are brushing me off, if you're not ignoring me, if you don't like me, I'm not going to go there. I mean, if we're human beings like that, right? Why wouldn't the Lord, why wouldn't the Holy Spirit reside in certain churches and not in other churches? Because they don't believe that they're not welcoming. So just like that. That's a spiritual realm, right? We welcome the Lord and the Lord comes. Well, if the, the people in the land are welcoming violence, welcoming demons, the demons will come. You call on spirits and they will come, right? So we have to understand that this is a spiritual warfare. There are things that we need to dig deep into the land of Israel, the physical land and of Gaza. There is a land battle from the ancient days. And even as I put on my Facebook um, post about how 5784, the ancient doors are opening. I wonder why I wrote that. <laughs> but it was about how the ancient doors are opening, meaning things of the past are opening up, which means that the battles of the past that have not ended is going to reopen. So it'll have a conclusion of some sort. Don't be surprised by the shocking news you might be, hear you might be hearing from places in Asia. Don't be surprised because we were in the Zoom call last night and I told people we have to pray for South Korea and North Korea because how many of you know that the Korean War started in 1950, but it still has not ended. So technically, South Korea 
with all the K-pop stuff and Samsung and all the economic boom and church revival, we think that it's all safe, but no, they're still at war, meaning there's only a truce, a ceasefire, a, one of the most longest ceasefires, right? After the war, it was never resolved. Korean War. The land was divided by other foreign forces, and there's a lot of anger in the Korean people because uh, Korea was so weak. At least, you know, they Koreans didn't have the independent... Um, power to decide what to do so other bigger powers of the world came and made a con a truce and said ceasefire now and then they divided into half and you know that's why there's so much you know bitterness in in the korean people about all of that and it's still it's still not resolved right so you got the communist north korea you got the capitalist um Dem democrat technically not really but south korea um divided when I say ancient doors are opening, I mean things that were unresolved in the spirit realm may open again, and um, God may have to deal with it. So don't be surprised by different things that you might be hearing in the next few months, even. But you know, I was um, the 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 name Palestine comes from Philistine, who dwelled on the sea coast. So. Who fought the Philistines? Israel has always fought the Philistines, right? David fought the biggest Philistine warrior, Goliath. So is this the battle of David and Goliath? Maybe. We have to pray. We have to pray. There's so much more to what's going on right now. So my encouragement to the intercessors, the prophetic intercessors, and to the warriors, my encouragement to you right now, is that we have to get dig deeper we have to go higher to know exactly what strategies to pray for and how to um do real battle because the real battle is not what you see with your natural eyes the real battle is yeah second portion of this broadcast i do apologize there was an interrupted call i really should figure out how to it's a commercial some call from colorado there's no sorry about that i am sorry if i lost you and if i can find you again i'm gonna wait until some of you find me and just do this broadcast i'm super frustrated at this interrupted call i just shut them and then it said that my audio was interrupted i do apologize but you know i was i don't know how far along you've heard this but my my point is that this is a um this is a spiritual warfare and we need to fight the we need to fight the Philistines. We need to fight in the spirit realm. There's so much more to it. So Father in the name of Jesus, I pray for just your anointing and your blessing. Revelation after revelation about what is coming. I pray for um in-depth intercession that we would study the land um, we would study the land of Israel. We would study the land of Gaza. We would understand how to block the things of the enemy, how to uh, almost like intercept with our prayers, just like the Iron Dome over Israel. The, sh the rockets, you know, they're firing, the enemy's firing the missiles, and there's an interception in the heavenly realm. That's exactly what we're doing as prophetic intercessors. When the devil throws something, you intercept in the heavenly realm so that people that are under that protection are not bothered or hindered. So, you know, that is really what we're doing right now. I do apologize. There was a phone call from probably like some... Uh, commercial phone call that that's unnecessary that interrupted the broadcast but if you're hearing me okay please say hello uh and say pastor song you're back or something i just need to know that you're hearing me so the point that i made today um just a wrap up is that we have to understand that this is Hamas war is a spiritual warfare so don't get caught up in the rhetoric don't get caught up in arguments don't get caught up even in the protests and what the world is wanting you to believe um because at the at the um core of it you know how will you eradicate people who believe this as a spiritual mandate as like a, a, a religious war this is to them this is a holy war you know to the radical islam this is um something that they have to do it, it's it's kind of like 9 11 terror like these uh, people who kill themselves in a suicide uh, mission they're on a suicide mission and um in a way it's it's a uh, it's challenging for us because in the spirit realm as Christians, as Christians, in the spirit realm as Christians, we are to approach the warfare of the Lord with the spirit of martyrdom that we are willing to die for Christ. That's the, the strength of a warrior. 
right? That's how we are to approach it. And uh, it might sound like a radical thing for right now, but I'm telling you, as time passes and as we are preparing the bride to be received to Jesus in the second coming of Jesus, this will become the norm for many of us. Um, I hope this is encouraging for you. I'm going to prophesy for some of you. Um, God bless you. If you all can hear me, say yes and amen. And I see some of you watching. I'm going to pray for Shabbat I want to pray for some of you if you need prayer. <sighs> Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you release spirit of prophecy even right now in Jesus' name. I pray that you would raise up an army of people who will know how to do spiritual mapping. I just see spiritual maps unfolding and so i pray that god you will expose to us teach us how to map out strongholds of the enemy and give us strategy to know how to war in specific um areas of stronghold in jesus name and i pray for a mighty warrior to rise susan susan kim i know you're watching from seattle i want to bless you today Susan, I feel like God is saying, don't be discouraged by what you see and sense. There's greater battle um, that God is calling you to. And uh, you've been caught up in the smaller battles, but the Lord is moving you higher up. So God is giving you a higher perspective. There's a purpose to all of the warfare that you've been going through, says the Lord, Susan. God is saying to you, Susan, that there's a purpose to all the warfare you went through. I'm taking you higher. So, Father, I, th I pray that she would see from a higher perspective. You give her deeper revelation about how to pray for her, even hometown, home nation. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. Linnell, I bless you in Jesus' name from Wisconsin. God is saying that um, as the election cycle comes back next year, there's going to be some things that will escalate in Milwaukee and Wisconsin area. And the Lord is saying, keep watch. I have planted you there for a reason. The Lord is saying that. There are some really um, demonic agendas in the land, planted in the land, spirit of communism. Uh, really socialism communism marxism that's planted in the land and the lord says keep watch over the land i see um just average americans um just protecting the land from the chinese invasion i don't know just see like red uh underneath the land of uh, wisconsin a lot of red which represents communism and god says it has infiltrated but the lord wants you to be uh, a voice he wants you to speak up and gather people around you to war against it in jesus name so i bless you i bless you right now um Rachel Lynn, I don't know where you're watching from, but I bless you in Jesus' name. God is saying to you that he's giving you a helmet of salvation. If there's been any mental attacks, I see like me mental attacks in the past. I see like a helmet being protected over you. God is saying, I'm protecting your mind. Do not let the devil lie to you or get those lies uh, cre uh, creep in in your mind. I break it off in Jesus' name. The Lord is protecting your mind. There's a lot of mind games and warfare that is against God's people right now. But Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, every person that have joined me for the war room in the past 10 days, um, today as we end, I pray that God, you will just anoint them to understand that this is a spiritual battle and that we would understand how to um, be armed with the armor of God right now from top of our heads to the bottom of our toes. Just armor us up, suit us up for the for the warfare that is coming in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. I pray for protection over us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. I do apologize for the interruption. Um, it was totally unexpected. Probably useless call <laughs> that interrupted the broadcast. But uh, God bless you. And I did hear from some of my followers that there's like shadow banning um, against uh, what I'm doing. And, you know, it's the devil. So if you have, you know, if you can't follow me, find me. It might be other people just trying to disrupt you. I want you to resubscribe and re-like and find me again. But God bless you guys. This week we are, um, I am ministering in Honolulu. So if you're in Hawaii, Honolulu, expect um, flyers to go out so you know that, that I'm coming to Honolulu to minister. Even for um, Maui. Father, I pray that whatever happened in Lahaina and Maui, God, you will expose the things that need to be exposed. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will just um, yeah, do a new thing right now with people in Hawaii. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.